I'm not gonna bore you with some long-winded intro, rather than doing that I'd prefer to jump straight into the list, but before I do that I would like to quickly state that these games are based on Master System titles that I played growing up as the Master System was the very first console I ever owned, so without further ado, in at number 20 is Teddy Boy. Teddy Boy is a port of an arcade game called Teddy Boy Blues. It was released in 1985. Uh, it is based on a Japanese song by Yoko Ishino, I believe her name was. In Teddy Boy, you go through each stages that are constant loops. There's no beginning or end to the stage. You have to clear out all the enemies that jump out of these dice boxes. Now, the number of enemies that come out the dice is depend on the number that's on the dice. So, for example, if the dice number is 1, there'll be 1 enemy that comes out of it. If there's 3, there'll be 3 enemies. If there's 4, there'll be 4 and so on and so on. The game can be pretty fast paced at time. It does encourage you to move around. As if you do stand still, the platform underneath you does disappear and you fall through it. As well as that, every enemy you defeat do drop items. If you don't collect those items on time, they turn into these bugs that eat the time bar at the bottom of the screen. And there are also bonus stages that you can complete where you can gain special items. Now, this game itself doesn't really do anything special. It is extremely simple in every single way, such as gameplay, stage design and everything else. I can't quite describe it, but there's something really addictive to it. You could easily spend many, many hours on this without realizing where all that time has gone. And in at number 19, Action Fighter. Action Fighter is a top-down shooter very similar to Spy Hunter. Bear in mind I am using the term similar as loosely as I possibly can. You start off riding a motorbike firing standard bullets that can be upgraded by riding into the back of a Sega truck that shows up every now and then. There are alphabets floating in certain areas of the stage. If you manage to collect A to D, your vehicle gets upgraded to a car. If you collect all the alphabets up to F, your vehicle transforms into this kind of flying car. Look, I know it's supposed to be a plane in theory, but it looks like a flying car once all the parts are put together. This final transformation turns the game into a vertical shoot -em up and is required to complete each stage. There is a time limit, so all the alphabets have to be collected as quickly as possible. Look, I'll be honest, I've never even managed to get past the second stage of this game. The difficulty is pretty merciless at times, but it's still a super fun game to play. And in at number 18, R-Type. R-Type, which I'm sure many people are already familiar with, is a sci-fi side-scrolling shoot -em up where you can fire off normal bullets and charged shots to do more damage. There are upgrades available throughout the game for more powerful projectiles as well as a pod that can be attached to the ship to block projectiles being fired at you or it can be used as a weapon by separating it and firing it in the enemy's direction. The Master System version doesn't play or run anywhere near as well as the arcade version or even the PC engine version or turbo graphics depending on where you're from. But it's still a good port nonetheless and it's definitely a must have for the Master System. Now to me, Double Dragon is hands down the daddy of all beat mobs. It's easily responsible for some of the other great beat mobs we got during the late 80s and 90s, such as Streets of Rage and Final Fight, just to name a few of those. The NES port is the version that generally tends to get the most attention. Now, although the Master System version does have its problems, such as uh, dodgy hit detection and screen flickering, which can be a pain in the backside to deal with, it more than makes up for it with more characters on screen and an actual two-player co-op mode. This version also features more detailed and better graphics, a wider variety of enemies and better overall presentation. Unlike the Nintendo version, you have all the moves right from the get-go, rather than having to level up to unlock them. The Master System version is honestly overall much better than um, the NES version, and I don't say that because of my bias towards Sega growing up as a Sega fanboy in the 90s. Released a couple of months after the Mega Drive version, Sonic on Master System is essentially a much easier version of the game, with slight differences such as new stages, which also includes a stage where the screen moves automatically to the side while you're trying to keep up with it without being killed. Bonus stages in this game, um, yeah, they're much different to the Mega Drive version as well. In this version, you have to collect as many rings as you can in an area that's filled with springs and bumpers. But one of the biggest differences is when you get hit, you lose all of your rings, 
uh, and you have to start collecting from scratch again. Uh, unlike the Mega Drive version where you can still reclaim the rings after you get hit. Unlike the other version where you can get the Chaos Emeralds from the bonus stages. In this version the emeralds are scattered throughout the stages in random locations you have to search for. Which can be quite irritating at times. As I mentioned already there isn't much of a challenge in this game. But it's still a good entry in the series and it's much better than a lot of the more recent 3D Sonic games. The Wonder Boy series is one of my all time favourites. Admittedly the first game in the series is one that I like the least. I didn't really start getting into them until they would turn into the Monster World series later on. Unlike those future games in the series, this one is more, it's got more of an arcadey feel to it. There's 10 areas in total in the Master System version as opposed to the 8 in the arcade version. You are required to be quick with getting to the end of the stage as the health bar does start to go down quickly when you're not collecting fruit and other items. You can get hatchets that can be used as weapons against snails, snakes, bats and other enemies by breaking eggs. Another item you can get by breaking eggs is a skateboard which disappears when you crash into anything. Honestly please don't ask me why there's hatchets and skateboards inside eggs. I've no idea how they got in there, uh, but this game is definitely a must play for the Master System along with the other games in the series which will be featuring later on in the countdown. Rainbow Islands is the sequel to Bubble Bobble and it's a fun game to play if you just want something that's more relaxed, you know, kind of like a chill out type of game. It's pretty straightforward, you just create rainbows to get to the top of the stage while collecting items along the way and defeating enemies. Um, you defeat enemies by trapping them underneath the rainbow and then jumping on top of it. Once you get to the fourth level of each island, you take on a big boss. Now, unlike the original, this version is only one player and there's also an extra bubble bubble island that can be unlocked by collecting seven big diamonds. Lucky Dime Keeper was released during that time period throughout the 90s. I'd say 90s and late 80s to be more precise where almost every Disney licensed game that was released was great. Unlike today, it was pretty rare to find a bad Disney game. So you play as Donald Duck, obviously as you can tell by the title. You have to retrieve Uncle Scrooge's lucky dime that was stolen by Magica Dispel. Before you get to that though, you have to save Huey, Dewey and Louie across selectable stages. Now the stage select screen is very similar to the one in Quackshot that's on the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, throughout, so throughout the side scrolling stages you can use a mallet or a frisbee which some of the enemies drop. You can only take two hits before you die. The first hit removes your weapon away from you and the only way to attack enemies at this point will be by jumping on them. The boss patterns are fairly simple to figure out so they shouldn't provide much of a challenge. Renegade is an awesome beat em up and the first game in the Kunio-kun series. You know those games like uh, River City Ransom, Super Dodgeball just to name a few. Originally released in arcades in 1986, the Master System port is nowhere near as difficult as the original version thankfully. It would be unfair to make comparisons to the arcade version as that's obviously going to be superior in every way. But in, in, if you were to compare it to the NES version, the Master System port is definitely far superior in terms of graphics and gameplay. Now button 1 attacks to the left and button 2 attacks to the right. Pressing both buttons together performs a jump kick. The one part of the game I've always got a tough time getting past is the motorcycle sequence on the second stage. You have no idea how much I hate that. Uh, next up Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion. If I'm being honest I actually prefer the Master System version of Castle of Illusion to the Sega Mega Drive one. Although Generally for the most part the gameplay and stages are fairly similar, there are some differences. Like in this version you have the ability to pick up items and throw them at enemies. Whereas in the Mega Drive version you can collect apples, you normally have to collect um, apples as items and then you use them as projectiles. Uh, other, uh, other differences include the fact that the Master System version uses much lighter colours, which I prefer to the darker colours used in the Mega Drive version. And the boss designs, boss fights and boss patterns are completely different in this version. Also if memory serves me correct, I don't think the Mega Drive version has the dragon that you have to defeat before the final boss. Uh, even the final boss is completely different as well. Alex Kidd in Miracle World is the very first video game I played. At least I think it is. 
It might have been. I. It was an extremely long time ago. Okay, I, I was a child. Uh, but it would have either have been this or one of the Wonder Boy games. But I'm fairly certain it was definitely Alex Kid, um, as it was a game that was built into the console itself. Now, before Sonic came along, he was supposed to be the main face of Sega. But then most of his games didn't sell as much, sell as well as they should have. So basically, you go through stages punching blocks and getting items and money to use at the store where you can buy vehicles to get past certain sections, but once you crash them, you can no longer use them. The vehicle sections are easily the best part of the game for me. It's the one thing I love the most. I gotta say, the one thing I always hated about it is the Rock Paper Scissors game. That's the one thing I always hated the most about playing this. Ah, uh, number 9. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. The Master System version of Moonwalker and even the Mega Drive version are completely different to the arcade version. The arcade version was more of a isometric type shooter uh, and you could use up to three players in that version. Although inferior to the Mega Drive version, the Master System version is still impressive in its own right. So you go through each stage as Michael Jackson clearing out enemies while searching for tied up children. I'll let you make your own jokes there with that one. Um, you can move on to the next stage after finding all the missing kids. This just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? Each stage features 8-bit versions of Michael Jackson's songs. You can perform attacks by kicking the enemy or you can perform a special move by keeping the attack button pressed and that forces the enemies to dance to death. However, this does take up 3 bars of your health every time you do this. Now if you remember, I did say earlier that there would be more Wonder Boy games coming up in the list, and I wasn't kidding. The beginning of Dragon's Trap starts you off at the end of Monsterland, where you defeat the Mecha Dragon. Upon beating the dragon, you get cursed and turned into a lizard. This game is very Metroidvania-like in many regards. At least, I consider it to be one of the more earlier Metroidvanias. You won't be able to get past certain areas without defeating dragon bosses that give you the ability to transform into different shapes, such as, you know, just for example, like a lion, a hawk, or a mouse. Each of these abilities are used to get past those sections. So, for example, the mouse transformation allows you to stick to walls and ceilings, so that would help you get past sections that require you to run along the walls and up the ceiling, basically. You can also equip different weapons and armor to increase your stats and use multiple spells. Dragon's Trap is definitely my second favorite Wonder Boy game on the Master System. Now, Asterix is a platformer based on the Bon Dessiner. I know I've completely butchered that pronunciation, but they're based on the French comic books, okay? Uh, and it's a game I spent many hours playing during my youth. You go through each stage alternating between Asterix and Obelix. Now when you play as Obelix, he tends to be much slower, but he has the ability to break through objects and get past obstacles with ease. Whereas Asterix is much faster but weaker, so as a result he requires special explosive potions to get past obstacles. The two player mode allows one player to clear a stage as Asterix and the other one can play through it as Obelix. The bosses start off easy, but they get much more difficult the further you progress. Admittedly, I've never once been able to beat this game from childhood all the way up till now, but regardless of that, it's still one of the best games the Master System has to offer. The Ninja is a top-down shooter where you go through a vertically scrolling stage firing shurikens at enemies that are in the way. In some instances, you have to avoid obstacles and traps while defeating enemies, just like the second stage where you have to avoid large boulders flying in your direction while making your way to the top of the stage. Now, button 1 allows you to fire off your shurikens in multiple directions while moving around, while button 2 allows you to fire off shurikens in a fixed angle. Pressing both of those buttons together though lets you go invincible for a couple of seconds, well, just momentarily to be more precise. That allows you to dodge attacks or anything flying in your direction. You can upgrade your shuriken by picking up scrolls that are on the floor in these stages, and that allows you to use big shurikens that can go through multiple enemies at once. I remember the stage that always gave me the most difficulty was the one where there's these logs floating across a river, and you have to maneuver your way across each log while trying to defeat enemies at the same time. Alex Kid in Shinobi World is easily the best Alex Kid game. 
It's clearly a parody of Shinobi. Uh, the game features similar bosses and a remixed version of the soundtrack. It features some cool gameplay mechanics that weren't in the original Shinobi, such as wall jumping or that spinning around the pole attack that sent you flying through enemies and breakable blocks at high speed. Some of the upgradable weapons include chucking spears or a sword that allows you to deflect projectiles. The game features four stages with three levels each. As mentioned earlier, the bosses are similar to Shinobi, however, they are much easier to beat in this game. Wonder Boy in Monster Land is the game that takes the series in a different direction, and that's for the best as well. One of the elements that has returned from the first game though is the fact that you are kind of made to clear each area as quickly as you can. You have this hourglass, uh, it's in the top right corner, you have this hourglass that's running out all the time. Um, once it runs out, your health starts to deplete as well. When you first start the game, the character feels really slow and clunky to control due to the lack of equipment and abilities. But once you start getting equipment such as powerful swords, shields, armors and boots to increase the stats, you do notice the game starts to feel more smooth and the character starts moving more quickly. You can get new equipment by grinding for enough gold to get the items you need from shops. In order to move on to the next area, you do need to get a key to make progress which can only be obtained by defeating the boss at the end of each section. Unlike Dragon's Trap, which I mentioned earlier, is more Metroidvania-like. Wonder Boy in Monster Land is more linear. It's straight up moving from one section to the next stage by stage. Now, considering this is the highest rank Wonder Boy game on the list, I think it's pretty obvious of me to say that this entry is my favorite of the Master System Wonder Boy games. Now look, I'm fully aware that this version of Ninja Gaiden doesn't even come close to the NES version in terms of gameplay and is completely unrelated to the story of that version, but it's an excellent entry in the series nonetheless. Some of the mechanics that still remain are the wall jumping ability and the magic attacks. Although the magic available in the Master System game is completely different to the NES one, there's also an attack in this game when you push two buttons together that makes the entire screen flash and it wipes out all the enemies. But the problem with that is it costs you your own energy. One of the things I enjoy the most about playing this version is the fact that once you save up to 999 of the amount of magic you can store, you do get infinite magic attacks which made the game much easier for the boss fights especially. But even without the infinite magic, the boss fights are fairly simple as they follow a predictable pattern. The biggest challenge in this game is actually the platforming sections before you get to the boss. Next up, Shinobi. Yeah, I know, two ninja games in a row. But this is hands down the best ninja game you can play on the Sega Master System. And I'd probably argue the best ninja game in general. I like this version much more than the one on the arcade. The main difference being that this version gives you a life bar instead of killing you after one hit. Uh, throughout each stage in the game, you'll notice hostages that can be saved. Although it's not mandatory to do so, it, it is recommended. It's definitely for the best that you do, um, as you can get health and weapon upgrades. Especially when it comes to weapon upgrades, you can get things like upgrades that speed up the amount of shurikens that can be thrown, upgrading the shuriken to grenades, or even turning it into a grenade launcher. Every stage and boss fight uses the same soundtrack throughout, which gets repetitive after a while. Speaking of boss fights, they can get really brutal. The one boss I really used to hate going up against, it's Mandara or Mandara, I've no idea how it's pronounced. But that boss is easily one of the worst in history. If you don't have the necessary upgrades for your shuriken, or if you're using a slow weapon, you're essentially screwed at this point, there's no way of getting past without a fast weapon. The ending to the game also felt like a complete anti-climax, especially after everything you go through just to get there. And number one, my favorite Master System game and the one that I, I always return to is Spellcaster, otherwise known as Warrior Quest in South American countries, and Kujaku O in Japan, which is also the name of the manga that it's based on. One of the things that originally stood out to me about this game is the way that it blends multiple styles of gameplay. So you got the standard side-scrolling action sequences where you use your magic projectile attacks to defeat enemies and pick up blue orbs to restore your health and orange orbs to restore your magic. Then there's the adventure sequences which I enjoy the most about this. 
So throughout your adventure sequences, you interact with the environment, you can talk to people that are nearby, you can pick up items, you can use items and even explore using this kind of point and click type interface. There are even sequences during the adventure scenes where you have to use very specific spells to get out of tight situations. The term underrated gets thrown around far too much, but for me, not only is this the best game on the system, but generally I think it's the one that's the most overlooked, especially when you look at a lot of these lists that future Master System games. Spellcaster tends to be the one that is normally missing from there. The game did receive a sequel later on for the Mega Drive uh, called Mystic Defender, but that was that didn't even come anywhere close to this. That was more of a generic side-scrolling game. And don't get me wrong, uh, it was fun to play, but as I mentioned, it, it doesn't come close to Spellcaster. So that was a list of my 20 favorite Master System games. I'm sure there'll be many that you disagree with, and that's perfectly fine. These are games that I love after all, and if you feel anything else should have been on the list, or if anything else should have been number one, then feel free to leave a comment down below. Bye.